Welcome to the offseason in our New England Patriots franchise. We lost in the very first round of the wild card to the Las Vegas Raiders. There was definitely some iffy calls, specifically that fumble that we had earlier on in the game, which we knew that was absolutely knee was down and everything, and ultimately lost by four. We had a chance right at the end and just kind of choked it. Blocking wasn't great. Receiver separation wasn't great. But mostly our defense, our pass coverage, our pass rush wasn't great. But who can we actually replace is a big question. Obviously, we'll have to see uh, about some regressions. But looking at the roster right now, some of the things we could definitely do is improve that offensive line, right? We could use a new right guard. We could use a new left tackle. You could debatably use a new left guard and center. Really, the only guy that I feel super comfortable with going forward is on Wenu. Tight end, Hunter Henry had a great year, but obviously he is going to regress pretty hard, so that might be a position we look at. Wide receiver is all over the place because uh, Javon Baker is injured, but I think we have a good trio of receivers for now. Obviously, Ramondre Stevenson is him. Drake Mays had some ups and some downs, but it was his rookie year with a you know rambunctious bunch. Uh, I don't even know if that would be a really good fitting to call them that, but uh, it was an interesting bunch, right? As far as the defense goes, once again, it talks about, we talk about this regression point. Uh, you know, obviously Dietrich Wise had a great year, but at 30-some years old, probably not going to stick around too long. Same with Jonathan Jones, uh, Jabril Peppers, Duggar. They're all kind of on the older side when it comes to potentially regressing. You know, 28, 29 years old for a lot of these guys, even older for some others. Uh, and then other defensive players like Jawan Bentley, as far as the edge goes, I think we're fine with Uche and Ojulari, especially Uche, who had a really good year. But at the same time, they did, you know, at times disappear as well. So we'll see what happens there. But there's a lot of different things that we can upgrade uh, up upon in this offseason. And that's what we're going to be heading on to go do. Also, this will be the first and potentially only time I'm bringing up. But YouTube had a sort of bonus promotion going on for any channel that hadn't had channel membership set up. So basically, I get a little bonus for the month and for the first 100 members that join, if we even get that. Basically, if you don't know what channel memberships are, if you've ever seen that little join option next to the subscribe button on like pretty much every other channel, that's basically channel memberships. Uh, it's similar to Twitch subs. There's some emojis in there and some like badges next to your name for how long you've been channel membership or whatever. Right now, I have it on kind of the base minimum that you can have it on you know there's a bunch of different tiers you can make it up to like 50 bucks a month or something which is crazy but i basically just did the basic thing so youtube's like happy with me and i'm happy with them giving me that little bit of bonus we chase in the bag a little bit um but yeah you don't have to join it don't worry about it uh as far as like the future of that maybe i delve more into it it's kind of hard to think of tiers because like they recommend doing like channel member only videos it's like no that's paywalling i am against paywalling of all sorts i don't like that so no i'm not going to be doing that i have no idea what i would do for that but as of right now if you join them the channel membership well thank you but you get some emojis you get some badges and then at the end of each video i'll have a kind of like credit similar to like if you're watching a movie or a show or something of the usernames of people that have joined. So it's going to be really awkward when there's like no names for the whole rest of our lives. But either way, that's basically it. Join, don't join. I love you either way. Thanks for watching and let's get on to the offseason. And I also wanted to mention if you guys want to see the preseason tomorrow, 500 likes will do it. I think you guys can easily hit that. Anyways, Back on to the offseason. Now all that nonsense is out of the way. Let's get into the divisional round. Do we even get anything? No, we don't. Weekly awards. Do we actually get an award for sucking? Well, it's, it wasn't an award for sucking. We don't suck that well. You know, we, that's an AVN, baby. I don't even know if they do that kind of stuff. Um, But, uh, yeah. I don't know where I'm going with that. That's just, just disgusting. Let's go to the Pro Bowl. Uh, we'll see if our players made it. We should have a couple in there, right? Ramondre. That's not the Pro Bowl, buddy. There we go. Pro Bowl. We got to see this running back because we know. We already know Ramondre Stevenson is running back one. Drake May was actually QB2. Debatably QB3. So obviously, you know, whoever went made the Super Bowl might have been in there. Uh, wide receivers. Polk at number three. Feel like he should have been a little higher than that. Henry didn't make the list. O-line, our former player, it's been a long time now, I suppose, but uh, former player, Anwenu, backup right tackle, D-line, no, DT, no, linebacker, unless I'm missing someone, CB1, we like to see it, and I think that was it, right? 
I mean, fair enough. We got a couple of guys on the list, though. I mean, most teams don't have more than four Pro Bowlers, and we did. Raiders, okay, so say what you will about us choking in round one, but the Raiders are apparently in the Super Bowl, so... I mean, what do you want from me? They're a 9-8 and eight team in the Super Bowl with freaking Garner Minshew. All I'm saying, if Bengal doesn't win the Super Bowl year one, he's just a bot. Like, that's all I got to say. I can't believe the Raiders are really here. What is this? Like, how is this even possible? Like, the Raiders are, should not be in the Super Bowl. This is so weird. They cook, though. Let them cook. Please no one tell Bengal that, that I said that. I don't. I want them to know. Um, but <laughs> do they win the Super Bowl? Okay, the Eagles won the Super Bowl. I was about to say, even making it to the Super Bowl, this, the Raiders, it's crazy. We got some retirements. Harrison Smith is one of those guys. Russell Wilson's one of those guys. Bobby Wagner's one of those guys. Rogers is one of those guys. Tyron Smith said, yeah, I'm not going to be blocking for the next Zach Wilson. Lane Johnson's gone, even though he won a Super Bowl. Unfortunate for the Raiders to lose there. As they, I mean, they came close. Let's see what the, uh, the actual, like, kind of run-up was. Let's take a look at the league schedule. We have the wild card round, obviously. I get to see us lose one final time. The Niners smoking the Packers. What's new? And the Niners getting beat by the Eagles and the Raiders beating the Colts. And then, of course, we know about that last result. The Eagles winning the Super Bowl. Okay, I mean, they finally get that uh, ring that they've uh, been kind of chasing. I mean, I don't even say they've been chasing, but the one they've kind of fell short of recently, I should say. Retirements. We don't have any retirements, though, right? I mean, this team's got some elder. Oh, another uh, former Patriot there, Stephon Gilmore. Yeah, we got a couple of old players, but they're not that old to where they're retiring, right? Let's take a look at press conference, see what they got. It's going to be some stupid, like, do you promise to draft 10 ED overalls this year, or are you some sort of idiot? Let's talk about, yep, here it is. There's no specific plan. Make a splash. Win the draft, I guess. I think it is possible to do a 75 overall in round three to four or whatever it is. Is it four to seven? Five to seven. Jesus. I mean, we're never going to get that. I wish EA lived in reality, though. That'd be freaking amazing. Let's take a look at Mock Draft 4 real quick, see where we're at with this. Uh, which draft selection do we have? They should know by now, right? 23. Uh, no, 22. Wow, I'm just blind. Yeah, um, no. We already know this true talent. His true talent is a three to four. I will say, though... The main reason why we had DT scouted so much is because that is kind of like the big need going in. Quarterback's dropping to 31, really. Um, but I will say corner probably is the bigger need, I, I have to say. Corner was kind of, uh, I mean, obviously pass rush led to the uh, pass coverage team not looking that good. But uh, yeah, let's take a look at the adjust lineup, see if we had any dev ups. Drake May it did not go up and act to, to a superstar. Unfortunately, Stevenson goes to X-Factor, Polk goes to Superstar, and Henry, who is an AD overall, goes to Superstar. His ability is Tank and Recuperation. I mean, I can't really imagine too many great abilities when you're only AD overall. And then Polk, what are your abilities, buddy? Deep in Elite, and then Persistence, obviously a stupid one, because you can't really stay in the zone if you don't even have a zone to be in. 85 Juke Move's pretty good, so you could argue. Really good uh, upgrade there in Deep In, by the way. You could argue, you know what, I'm going to say runoff elites. I think that's a fair ability. It's not OP, but it's a fair ability because he already kind of does that well in general. That's why our run game was so good is they just didn't like our uh, wrecking ball. Fair enough, that's that's the ability you want. Okay, we got the realistic one. They didn't like uh, our uh, wide receivers burning them, and they just let us cook every day. We got an upgrade point for Ramondre. Let's get that in there. Power move now. Shh, math. 87. Two to break tackle. One to stiff arm. 89 stiff arm. We were doing juke move, but juke move was kind of like useless. We got that plus two to speed as well. Ramondre is going to be great this upcoming season. Just glad he isn't going to regress just yet. And then defensively, we do see Gonzalez is a superstar. He also will get that third ability slot in a moment here, I think. Yeah, 85 overall. So... Let's go slot. He'll get to 85 man coverage anyways, I imagine. Usually get a man coverage upgrade in these, which he did, and he didn't actually. Let's make sure we get that, okay? I want week one to have, uh, you know, his ability. Six to play rec. I thought it was a six to something I cared about. Where is his play rec anyways? 84 after that. It's kind of rough. Uh, mid zone KO, strip spec, and short route KO. Wow, okay. So even though strict strip spec isn't that great... He got really good ability rolls anyways. I'm not going to touch that. I think 
He got way better rolls than I would have ever expected. Sadly, Wise doesn't go up in Dev. And then Bentley, I think, did? If I'm not mistaken, or was he already star? Okay, I thought he was normal, but I guess not. So not a whole lot of dev ups, but offensively had a few. We got a quarterback, or not quarterback, running back, wide receiver, tight end. And then, of course, defensively, we had uh, Christian Gonzalez. So some of our core players on this team have, uh, you know, devved up, if you will, had their development trait upgraded. Anyone else? It's new ability slot, nothing else. Season recap, what is this just going to show us MVP and all that stuff? So the MVP of the Super Bowl was Jalen Hurts. Obviously, the championship was uh, won by the Philadelphia Eagles. MVP is Dak. Coach of the year is Gerard Mayo. Who would have thought? Cooper Cup was uh, Offensive Player of the Year. Rashawn Gary was Defensive Player of the Year. Offensive Rookie of the Year is Jalen Polk. Defensive Rookie of the Year is Jared Verse. Going to the re-signs. What do we got? I'm pretty sure we took care of everyone. We got a lot of money, so shouldn't have a worry about it. Jonathan Jones, 83 overall. That is not a bad overall drop. Still very fast, too. So even if we draft cornerback, he could be a slot, right? So I think you definitely pay him, I think, a one-year eight. I like the loyalty he's had with us as well. He could have easily chased a ring. He's a good enough corner to, to get a lot of interest from other teams. Osborne, he's not a bad wide receiver, but I don't think we need him. Cole Strange, it's a fifth-year option anyways. Marco Wilson, Claypool didn't even play. Sean Wade. He had some really nice plays for us last year. It's going to be hard to pass on him, but I'm, I am thinking of drafting a corner. I don't know if I really want to hold Wade for two more years. A one-year 4.5? Oh, why did he say no? David Andrews has regressed. How bad did he play? Because I feel like our O-line was not bad. Four sacks allowed. I mean, that's a lot for a center, I guess. But we need a left tackle, so I would prefer to keep him on a one-year 5.5 if he can. Nice. If we can, you know, set him as a backup, he's worth that, just his mentorship. Okafor, no thank you. Hasty and Hawkins. Hawkins made some plays, but no thank you. Wise has regressed too hard. Did we not finish the contract for Wallace? There's no way we decided not to pay him. Not that we decided to, but you know what I mean. Where is the return game? 25.3 yards per punt or return isn't terrible. It's also not great, though. Damn, that contract would have been really nice. I'll do a two-year five. Yeah, I mean, I don't think you're going to be, to be honest, but sure, go for it. Uh, but yeah, as with this team, a lot of old players. I do like Joe Milton as a backup, so Jacoby Brissett. Nah, you know what? I like Jacoby. He's one of the premier backup quarterbacks in this league. I'll play three or pay three. I'll pay three QBs. That's fine. That's fine. Um... Yeah, I think that's where we stand. I mean, some backups in there that matter, but for the most part, I'm okay with losing the guys or losing. I guess Schooler's a good special team or why not. So we're officially at the start of week one of the offseason. You can see a bunch of stuff on the top stories. Is there any way to, like, go in there so my old ass can see it clearly? I guess this is about the best you're going to get, but you can see Jonathan Coachman. Yikes, somebody wanted to take the piano off the back of Richard Bishop for his next run. Really poor 40 time from the left end from memphis many teams look at the three cone as a true test of a prospect's ability and safe to say wisconsin's wide receiver tayshawn rotten aced his test uh and then we have running back jake armstrong stumbles in front of scouts at the uh, combine really hurt his draft stop this week so we have uh some players selling more than anything how do i okay so it is different okay fair enough uh, Casey Green improved his draft stock a bit this week. He's a right outside linebacker, which I suppose we kind of need edge, sort of. Tight end Aaron Morgan puzzles Scots by showing up overweight. Damn it. Uh, and then that might be it when it comes to youngsters. Yeah, that is it for now. I don't know if anything's going to change, but a lot of negatives for the most part from this class, not positives. Well, let's take a look at free agents. There might be a couple of names here that we would like to take. Chase Young is very interesting. Amari Cooper... Nick Bolton, ooh, 11 million per year for Nick Bolton. Linebackers, the problem is linebackers not really a big issue for us. You know, I'm going to take one look at our roster real quick just to see what we can do. You know what? I think we should go for Nick Bolton. We can afford to trade off Bentley. Don't tell him that in case we don't actually get Nick here, but he's basically like a faster, better, younger Bentley. Like, he, he has a lot of the same kind of style, like block shed better than zone and stuff like that. Similar tackle pursuit and all that, but Bolton's younger and faster. 
and just a little bit better at all those things as well. So I think Bolton would be uh, a good candidate to join us on a five-year 60. Is that good? Oh, wow, the Cowboys really want him. So we'd have to offer a lot more than that. But, I mean, I'm willing to do it. Our defense is arguably what lost us that game, and better defense means better chance of winning. We have the number one thing. Can't really do much more than that. So we will throw that offer on there. Uh, Ryan Kelly, if I would have known, maybe I wouldn't have went for Andrews. Uh, you also have Connor Williams. I kind of like both of these players. Let's take a look at who is better. I mean, because we could use some improvement on the offensive line without a doubt. Uh, it would seem that Ryan Kelly is better in almost everything except finesse blocking, I suppose. He's a little bit worse at uh, Connor Williams than Ryan Kelly. The only difference is Connor Williams is getting uh, vetted by a bunch of different teams. So if you want him, you're definitely going to pay more. What's the sizing? So 6'4". I mean, you could definitely put Connor, like, really anywhere you wanted. Maybe even, like, right guard, which we need. So do, like, a 3 or 42. I mean, it's about 15 million per, but that's fine. I'm down for, you know, adding a really good player. Should see the regression point, though, for safety, because I don't even think we did. Uh, Marquise Bell, who, I mean, he kind of shifts between linebacker and safety a lot. Shahid, so a lot of Saints players in here. And seeing that, a couple of running backs... Do we need a running back? Kind of, sort of. Cousins is in here, which... Uh, now that I'm thinking about it, why? That's an interesting one. Why is Kirk Cousins here? Did they can actually, like, take a dead hit? I didn't even know they could do that. I really did not know that they could do that. I did not think they would take a dead hit. But sure, that's sweet. Something different. Wide receiver, I think if you're going to add anyone new, you want to keep getting younger, because this team is a young squad, so... Sure, having that veteran presence matters, but at the same time, I do just want players that we can develop long-term. Is That's where this team is, right? It's still developing. The fact that we even made the playoffs is a miraculous one on its own. Could things change when, uh, you know, if the Chiefs are healthy and Mahomes is, you know, healthy and maybe the, the divisions and conference changes up because of, you know, more teams being better at the top? Potentially, who knows? Um, but, yeah, I don't think last season would have mattered too much, but going forward, it could. It definitely could. Uh, Williams, we definitely want. Guard, Zeitler is a one-year guy. I mean, you got to get somebody, right? Because like, we can't afford to have like all these players be replaced by draft picks. Good pass blocker, not a good run blocker, though. I'm going to look a little deeper into our roster and see our physical weaknesses and strengths, not just like which player are weak. You know, if we have a guard that has really good run blocking and his pass blocking isn't so good, then we know, like, hey, if we replace them with a really good run blocker and is a little bit better at pass blocking, we're winning. Whereas if we get a guy that's worse at run blocking, maybe Ramondre and the, the run game struggles, you know? So look, let's take a look at City, who is uh, very bad at pa pass blocking. So like we kind of talked about with that run blocking, a better run blocker. So if you're going to replace him with somebody and you like how your offense is playing as is, then try to find a guy that's good at run blocking. Cole Strange, a little more balance. It's probably all we're doing with, uh, you know, manual upgrades. But uh, yeah, 27, I mean, you could definitely play right guard. I would like a better left guard. The problem is I need someone that's kind of athletic, and I don't think Kevin Zeitler is that. And then Andrews. So do you put Cole Stranger right guard, maybe Connor Williams at left guard, and then you draft tackle? And then you have Andrews at center still? I think that would make sense. Tight end, you could still roll Henry and Bell, but... It would be nice to draft someone that's a little more athletic, a little bit better vertically. Uh, and then defensively, we talked about linebacker. If we don't get Bolton, I'm fine with what we got, but I would like someone a little bit more athletic. DT, I think, is a must. I do. And I think, you know, God, man, Duggar wasn't bad for us last year, but the dude is regressing. Like, he is... I mean, what was his stats last year? Zero picks, 91 tackles. I mean, he is, you know, run support guy. I don't really know if I like him as a, a number one safety, though. Also, am I just, like, ignorant? I did not know that Kevin Zeitler moved like that. 6'4", 339, and he moves like that? I know his agility's not that great, but... Okay, I mean, he is the kind of guy that you pick up when it comes to trying to win a championship, and I don't know if he would consider as a championship contender, even though he did make the playoffs. Yeah, I don't know. His motivation, mentor, I mean... Close to home, definitely. I mean, not really. Uh, has franchise quarterback? That's true. 
I mean, it seems like he's motivated by money more than anything, which, hell yeah, brother. Do we sign Zeitler? Do we even need him if we get Connor? That's the big question. And yeah, honestly, unless we went with, like, Jamal Adams, I don't know if we would spend any money in free agency. If we did, like, a one-year deal, would he be down? Because Jamal Adams is, like, basically a better version of Duggar. He's, like, basically the same player. Let's see if we get him. And we did not... Oh, God. And we don't get him. Sweet. Uh, targeted. Let's see who we got. No. So I did get Nick Cross. I wanted a backup safety just in case. And I got we got Connor Williams. But unfortunately, we did not get Nick Bolton or Jamal Adams, unfortunately. So the Cowboys, they are pretty good in same in fairness. A five-year 55 for Bolton. That was less than we... Didn't we offer a five-year 70, though? Wait, am I, like missing something or did i we did offer that price right also patrick ricard let's see what his blocking's like because you know we like to run the ball damn he is goaded if nobody wants patrick ricard i mean uh, i think that's gonna be the guy we go for as well let's get this run game going even more boom he'll be easy add in another name so that's three names two of them massive well i guess i can even see two of them massive because who would be the second massive one ricard who's a big dude physically but as far as like addition wise could cross see some starting time potentially he's young obviously super athletic zone coverage isn't even that bad it's like actually better than duggar i believe or equal to at least but uh yeah that's pretty much that connor williams Patrick Ricard, Nick Cross. That's going to potentially be our free agent group, other than maybe some like low, even lower ends. Uh, as far as the scouting goes, we already talked about the positions we need. So after getting the three guys we got, we could still use a tackle. I think, you know, we move Strange to right guard, Connor to left guard, and then we need a new left tackle. Or we could use Caden Wallace. Probably not, but we could. Wide receiver, we'll always keep our eye open just in case there's some speed demon or some tall dude. Whatever there might be. Running back, you know, same situation, but I think we're fine there. Quarterback, we're fine there. Tight end, we definitely want to look at. So, defensively, that's kind of the, the main looks. I personally would think Jonathan Jones would move to the slot, but we would need to actually find a capable starter in the draft. Didn't get Jamal Adams, so safety still kind of a need. Linebackers only getting worse. I think the must-get positions are DT and tackle. But the other positions I would really like to upgrade are at corner, safety, you know, potentially a uh, tight end. But yeah, I, I don't know how much we're going to be able to get in this draft because we don't have that many draft picks and we just listed off like a billion different position needs. We do have an extra third, fourth, and sixth, which will definitely help, but... All of our picks are pretty late in each round. All right, so now we're looking at the draft, and we can see a top 10 DT. So it looks like we actually have all of the DTs scouted. Ooh, I've got my eye. Joey Roberts, six foot six. Joe, okay, well, I mean, yes, I do want him on my favorites list, but I wanted to see him. Huh. I mean, I've got to believe it. I'm, I'm inclined to always believe the true talent, but man, does that look like iffy. But I have to believe the true talent. It's it's literally like law. Uh, as far as, you know, how it goes, three to four can be in the 70s. And the big problem with it is, yes, you should, in my opinion, believe the true talent every single time that they're going to probably be better than their projection or at least equal to it. But the problem is, if you have a really bad draft, the, the talent grade is going to be a little bit of a lie because if the draft sucks... That means the true talent's not going to be as good as a normal true talent. So if you have a 2-3 to three true talent in a draft that sucks, that could be like a 69-70 overall. Whereas if it's a true talent in a god-tier draft class, 2-3 to three can be better than some 1-2s. to twos. I would assume, though, that it's going to be like every other normal draft because, well, almost every draft is going to be at least baseline at most positions. I'm going to say that the, the true talents are good enough to believe that this round one is somewhere between 74 and 78, and this two to three is somewhere between 70 and 74. So I'm going to be taking a chance on those two players, I think. What about Morency? Damn, dude, he looks good, too. We don't need more than one DT is the big problem. And the big problem is he's round one, dude. He's, it says round one, damn it. What about Donnell? Donnell. Um, you know, he looks exactly the same as the other guy. But yeah, I think as far as what we're going to be doing here, I don't see us going for any three to four type DTs. So 
It's going to be between Roberts, Morency, and then potentially Dickerson. Let's see. Three to four is saying three to four. He's a nose tackle type. Don't need his nose tackle in this scheme, so that's not going to be a position we go for. As far as the DN goes, got a couple of speed guys. Uh, who was the guy they were talking about? It was Richard, wasn't it? Did he regress really hard into this? Because it said he was a left end. Maybe he's a right end. Maybe he's just not even a real person. Maybe he just never existed at all. But yeah, looking at speed, you have Armstead who looks pretty good. He's a 4.62 guy. Very uh, good finesse. A tackle, I'd be willing to bet he is really, really good. So Armstead's on my list. And then that guy's not a DT type. Harold is. Let's take a look at Morris now. Landry Morris looks a little worse, but still really, really good. He's a 1 to 2. Could potentially get him at 22. Then we have a Harold, uh, BJ Harold. If he's really good at football, maybe I will. Uh, he looks decent, but I would guess he's probably a 2 to 3, 3 to 4 type true talent. And then we have a couple other guys. Can we see there? No, we can't. We can only see speed. Kind of sucks that you can't flip between quickly. But Luke Penn, I think he has potential because he is a. Uh, a B finesse type guy, and then this guy's 23. Maybe I don't need to just completely like write off the older players, but in this case, I will. <laughs> um, yeah, let's actually instead of combine, let's go look at the uh, attributes first. A lot of work here, a lot of work. All right, so a lot of A's, which is not. Oh, it, his first name was Richard, was it? It's A. He had a bad 40 time. Is that true? A finesse move. It's not even true though. Like a 466 at 64255 is pretty good. Not really sure what we're doing there, but uh, what else do we got? Big fellas? Big fellas. Harold, once again, not very good at power move. Okay, a block shed. I wouldn't really trust him. I, I think I think it'd be all right. Might even be hidden, but if I were taking bets, you know, I have, I have only a certain amount of picks like I do. I don't know if I'd bet on him, so we'll see what happens there. And then we move to right end where you have a six foot uh, five 269 guy. I mean, I think it's worth putting all those guys on the list. They're round uh, one projections, which means they're probably going to be pretty good in all. I don't think that guy's going to be good, though. Then you have Kirkpatrick and Whitfield. Whitfield's not that fast. Lumen isn't that fast either. Speed does play a big enough of a factor to where you kind of have to be like, yeah, that guy's just not good. So we're not going to be putting those guys on our list. Let's get rid of that and put our uh, attributes back on here. We have some finesse. A bunch of finesse guys. So, I mean, all of these guys are good just with finesse. So, Collier to Roberts. Combine, Collier is 477. I mean, those speeds are all just enough to be like, yeah, that's good enough. It's good enough. Will I actually draft him? I don't know, but it's good enough. I also went on the defensive side first because this is the biggest positional need, I think, for us is just a lot of players on defense. Brackens, what's his finesse? A finesse move. Fast enough. Definitely worthy of uh, drafting if we wanted to. Uh, and then we have this guy who looks like an edge rusher because he's 473, but I actually don't know. Got a 473 playing off ball. I don't trust it. Uh, and then you have this guy. Ooh, this guy looks really good. 45240. A little raw, but look at all the athleticism. So Brown is really high on my list. I would really like to draft him if I can. Then you have all these other guys that are pretty damn fast too. Leroy Swain. Uh, great speed, change directions, good and all that. So Swain will be on our list. And then we have Bush, who looks pretty fast as well. Antonio Bush, great across the board. So, I mean, that's got to be 86, probably 85, 86 in, the, uh, in that range. Then you have 23-year-old. I'll take a look, though, because if they're fast enough, I'm like, yeah, I don't care. I'll use them. And he is, but he's a day three. So we'll put him on the list. But I don't know if I really, like, trust that he'll be in a position that I want to be in. A top five projected middle linebacker, Pat Slayton. Very athletic. Block shed's not that good. I think that could be a lie. I don't think he's really that good. 4-4-5-40 is crazy for that guy. McFarland, he's fast enough to make the list, but considering he... You know what? I don't think he's good enough. I think as a 2-3, to three, there's no chance I draft a guy that high. This guy looks similar, but he's faster, and I can take him around later. You know what I mean? So I just don't think it's worth it. We got another 447 here. Bernard Brown. We got a lot of speed in this class, though. Bernard Brown. So we'll put him on the list just because he's fast as hell. Vereen is 451, so that's fast enough to make it as well, I think. Great speed. Good to uh, you know, change direction. Elite agility. Where the hell was he? Was it Vereen? It was Vereen. 455 is pretty fast, but he's 23. Oh, look at that. That is. He's looking raw. 
And then we'll look at the last guy, the 447, Carlos Wimbley. Change direction is not good, but he is pretty, pretty damn athletic. So we're going to put him on the list as well. It's going to be hard to kind of like filter through the players we have and who we're actually going to draft. But Casey Green, athleticism's there. Really good power move, decent block shed. We got Wolford, 463. A finesse, A awareness. Fair enough. Dylan Silver, 21 years old. Good athleticism. Doesn't look to be a pass rusher, which is a little weird. At 6'3", 256. If he is a pass rusher, he is really raw. Uh, this guy's also a pass rusher. You usually don't see pass rushers 3 to 4. Okay, athleticism. Finesse is probably a B. I mean, I don't. I just don't see myself drafting a guy that's, you know, that questionable in the three to four range. Groves, B finesse. That's good enough for me to put on the list. I actually would be pretty interested in drafting. And the problem is, I kind of like where our edge is right now. So I, I'm not really sure if I would spend that. And then slack, meh, meh. What about cornerbacks? Speed, four four eight. So you can see here. The speed alone in this class is really not great. It's really not. The only guy that looks halfway decent so far is McCullough. He's got some decent ratings, but he is slow, dude. 89, 90 speed at best, probably. Sticking like a Justin Jackson is more of a safety type. Also very slow. What about Starks? Joshua Starks. He's a 2-3. to three. Uh, Another slow player. This is a really rough cornerback class. Arguably the worst cornerback class I've seen in a long time. Although, then you have this guy who looks pretty blatant. We might end up finding ourselves a six foot four corner uh, on our team this year. I think that guy is pretty hard to pass on. And honestly, if he's good and we take him, I don't really know if I need much more bacon. I can't believe how slow these guys are. If you look at that left side, when it says solid and the right side says like four five, that's 88, 89 speed usually. That's it's really bad. Junior Miller is pretty fast, actually. Uh, Pickens. Got a 4-4-3 in Gathers. Once again, I hate that speed matters that much, but it does. It does. If you're slow, you know, you're just you're struggling. You're just not having a day. Gathers, kind of raw, but once again, and then the left side. And then you see that left side, and you're not happy. Should be looking at the pro days, too, but the 40 time is usually close enough anyways. So uh, we're pretty happy with that. 23 years old. God, I wish he wasn't 23, but fast. I don't really like the the corner class at all, though. I think it's it's pretty lackluster. And then you got players that are on the older side on top of it. Yeah, I mean, the fastest 40 isn't even in the 4-3s. Oh, there's one 4-3. Barnes, who had the, um, the solid on the left side, didn't he? Oh, yeah, great. So he is actually pretty decent. Uh, free safety. We got speed from McLean. Problem is, I'm not drafting safety in the first round. So no matter how good he was, I am not going to be grabbing him. Two to three for the second round, though. Kevin Williams, not a huge fan of the height, but he is good enough to make the the scouting board. Carlos Newell, very good man corner type of player. Maybe in the 90s, Newell looks good. Then you have uh, 23 years old, which I got. You know, I got to get away from like just hating on it. The problem is you look at 23 versus 22 and 21. If I have players that are the two different ages and I don't know a lot about either of them, obviously I'm going to be choosing the uh, the younger player every time. You know, this is not really a, an age thing that I like to do. Wilkinson, 23 years old as well, but he's athletic. He's a day three. How far is that? Who knows? If that's a six rounder, he's worth it. Then the rest of the free safeties I'm not feeling. Uh, free strong safety, maybe he's good. But eh, I'm going to put this guy on the list already cause just because of the f speed. So a man coverage is great. He looks really good. One to two. Don't know if I'd go that high, but maybe if I want corner and, you know, I'm looking at these safeties, could have an option. But I think that 6-4 corner is calling us. Let's be real. He's calling all of us. Every single one of us, you know, involved right now, we're, we're being called. Redmond's slow. He's a one to two. I just, once again, the speed, it's a problem. Not having the good speed is in fact a problem was ivory the guy yeah he was wise you don't know much about him not very fast so there's no point you know you get limited amount of uh kind of scouting with the private scouting then the knowledge williams looks okay was he a two to three he wasn't so with that knowledge because i don't know much i'm not going to be going for him five nine great speed durant looks good i don't like that he's only five nine but you know you can't win them all 
A lot of 4-4 uh, four, four safeties, at least. Ooh, Bartel looks really good. Is he a 2-3 as well? I don't know if I really see myself going with two DBs in the first two rounds, but got to say, this safety room is looking nice. It is looking really nice. Uh, and then the depth is kind of gone there. Special teamers we'll take a look at later. Quarterback I'm not too worried about. Running back, I mean, it's probably not too bad of a, a situation. 437. We don't really need running back. So if I'm going running back, it's going to be really late. So uh, Porter and on, I think, is going to be where we're going to be looking. Cordell Porter looks really raw. He is very athletic, though. So once again, you can mold an athletic player, especially at a position like running back. That's why they're a dime a dozen. You know, you can mold these guys. If they have those uh, speed ratings, they're good at breaking tackles. You can just, you know, you can't teach vision necessarily, but you can help them improve on it. And we might have found ourselves a gem. I don't know for a fact, but a B trucking for a speed type with A carrying, A break tackle, A ball carrier vision. I guess he's not a speed type. He's just got a lot of speed. But yeah, that 437, which I mean, kind of locked onto him the moment we went into this. Definitely something there. And then Jake Armstrong, they talked about he stumbled. And I can kind of see that. He doesn't really look that fast, but he's a UDFA. He dropped 78, 76 spots. So obviously I am uh, I'm intrigued by that uh, by that potential right again. You know, once again, he had the potential and then dropped. So there's potentially something there, especially as a UDFA. But yeah, if there was any player I was really wanting to go for, it's probably Riddick as a day three. It's a good chance I do go for him as well. Uh, and then the rest of the players, I mean, I think we're fine with what we got. Now we're looking at wide receivers. Uh, there's a pretty damn fast guy in Newell who I feel like that name is familiar. Unless we just ran through a Newell. I can't remember. But uh, Keyshawn Virgil, uh, wide receiver. Pretty athletic. Six foot five. Definitely interesting. Definitely going to be on my board. Uh, Broyles, 6'3", 444 is also interesting. He looks really, really talented, actually. The problem is wide receiver's not that good, uh, big of a need that we even have it on that list. And honestly, I'm probably just going to put those guys on the list and just skip past. We have a guy that skipped the combine. Uh, I'm curious to see if there's anything there. Uh, maybe he'll do his pro day. I'm not sure. Usually they don't, though. And then we have Roten, who I think has been climbing, if I'm not mistaken. He has good uh, agility. But yeah, he does not look very good, I'll tell you that much. But yeah, as far as a team that has guys on the come up, I really wouldn't be feeling comfortable taking anyone higher than like in the third round, maybe even later than that. Definitely interested to see what this tight end position looks like because that is definitely the position of more need. We have a wide receiver here, Massey, who looks really raw. He's got a 4-4-5. Yeah, I mean, just not liking that. Problem with wide receivers, there's so much talent, there's so much depth usually, that even when they have Fs and Ds, they still might be halfway decent. Of course, Will Mayo is definitely making our list because he looks pretty good. We have Alexander, 5'10", 22 years old. The only guys that are halfway decent are these like super shorter type of players, unfortunately, but he'll make the list just because I need some uh, some fill-ins here. Uh, Kevin Turk, another guy similar to that. Be nice to just see like a six foot tall Maybe six foot one, like four, three, five guy. I know that's a lot to ask for, but still, why can't I? Uh, Milner, I think just based on how bad, you know, the players have looked in general, we're just going to throw the speed on there. And then uh, take a look at those physical, not the physicals, the attributes. So Milner, we got some spec catch a little bit of deep route and that's really it and then where does it show it doesn't show my other guys though there we go smith davidson and mccullers who all look really raw as well so i mean you're just you're hoping the speed translates that's really all you've got and uh, wide receiver at least attribute wise looks pretty good what about combine okay you've got maybe you got a couple options actually so we'll throw all the speed guys on for now uh, of course, the 455 isn't that great. Anyone later? Not really. So we have those guys. Now we will look at... I guess I kind of want to look at them individually. McGill, AABC. Really athletic guy. 6'4". Very intriguing. I almost wondered, you trade down from 22 to like 12 in the second round so you can grab the tight end and the corner. What about Cole, though? How good does he look? He's athletic as well, but he is not McGill-level athleticism. Obviously, we don't care about Morgan. He's a bit on the uh, slower side. Uh, Boyd also looks pretty good as well. Can't lie. 
but not great. Johnson, see if he's uh, exceeding. Sort of, not really. I don't think Johnson's really a guy that want, should be on the list. And then we have the 6'3", fast carry Fabers. Ooh, oof, I don't like it. And then I'll be honest with you, O-line is pretty boring for you guys, I imagine. So we're going to skip that. I'll do it, obviously. And then uh, we'll head into the draft. All right, so we have our pro day results, which maybe I should have, uh, once again, maybe should have looked at that, but, you know, before doing any scouting. But uh, as far as pro day and combine goes, I mean, you're not really seeing too much of a difference. Oh, we're actually seeing Brown was even faster. <laughs> what? Brown's even better than I expected? The guy's insane. The guy is kind of crazy with it. Uh, edge rusher Hamilton looks even faster than he was before. I mean, for the most part, the pro day usually goes up. These safeties, though, man, they are they are a problem. I still think, though, the corner, that six foot four corner, is going to be your best bet. Let's take a look at what his pro day versus, uh, you know, forty. You know, the combine was, uh, you know, faster there as well. So, looking like, in my opinion, we trade down to 12, 10, 12, something like that, because obviously two to three could be anywhere. I'd be so disappointed. Uh, and then. We take the tight end and the cornerback. I think tight end is a bigger need, sort of. It's hard to say because Hunter Henry was good for us. Oh, he's even faster. Hunter Henry was good for us, but his his time is ending, right? He would be a solid number two, which I've taken one earlier today. Felt great. Uh, let's take a look at this last mock drop. Let's see how wrong they are because, like I said, there's a very good chance we're trading this back. Oh, is it? Are we not, we're not mocking or drafting, huh? Okay. I, I kind of looked forward to seeing that, to be honest, but sure, why not? But let's move on to the next one. Uh, for the most part, I think we're pretty set on what we need to know and what we have known. So, uh, you know, the private is going to just maybe help with some of these linemen we're not 100% sure about. But uh, let's take a look at them. It took multiple backing outings, but uh, we are here. We are in these streets. So debate on what I want to do for DT as well, because... Man, there's, there's not a bad draft class. At first, I was kind of thinking kind of a bad draft class. Now I'm thinking kind of not that bad. The other question is, do you pass on edge rusher at 22 if it exists? I don't know. I really don't know. Um, Yeah, I don't know. There's so many linebackers, so much speed. I think you definitely want Trent Brown because he just looks insane. And then for cornerback, I really do want Hill. Yeah, I mean, I don't really need to know much about the safeties. Yes, we need safety. I just personally don't think we can afford it. You know that? I really don't. So I'm, uh... Like, I just... I don't think we have the draft picks for safety. We obviously want the tight end. I think you further scout O-line. These are, some, you know, kind of the guys I had on my list because they were showing what they were showing. There wasn't much else going on. So we'll, uh, we'll further scout some of these guys. O-line, we might have to just do a day three, which sucks because they're pretty much all centers. Ah, man, I, I'm really thinking about it because I we have players, but the problem is we have too many players. And even though tight end is almost like a luxury pick here because we actually do have Jaheim Bell. He looks pretty good. I do think that that guy is too good to pass. So pick 22 trade down. I'm hoping that that does well for us. I hope that the value get we get from that carries hard and if it can maybe we actually pull off a miraculous draft because it looks pretty good i like the players we got here uh do we have anyone else here i think that's where we're at this is what we're looking at boom also i wanted to highlight some of the wild trades that happened in this latest offseason and uh yeah the broncos traded to their division rivals their w rookie wide receiver at the time uh, Troy Franklin for Tuli Tui Pelotu from the Chargers. Not a bad trade, I suppose. But a weird one. Definitely a weird one. Interdivisional as well. And you have uh, Reed Blankenship getting traded. Trevin Wallace is a bear now. Um, I don't know. Uh, there's some weird trades in here, but what can I do? And we are entering the draft. Do I have the presentation on? Oh, God, I do. Okay, so... I'm definitely going to turn that off, uh, but I'll probably turn it back on for our pick because I care about our pick, not anyone else's. So first pick overall went to the Rams, who took a DT who seemed to be generational just based off of the, the kind of small things I've seen. The Giants go quarterback at three. The Saints go QB at four. The Seahawks go DT at five. You have the Browns going wide receiver at six. The Broncos going tackle at seven. The Bears go on Edge, who we actually had on our list at 8. 
Number nine to the Titans is another offensive lineman, another tackle. The Texans go with a right end at 10. The Jaguars with right outside linebacker at 11. The Chiefs, who are you know at the lowest they've been in so long, they go right end with Tony Barr. Left end, Bishop to the uh, Washington uh, Commanders at 13, who was actually on the list for somebody that I think fell off a little bit. Hamilton at 14 to the Cardinals. A lot of these guys are players that we had. The Jets at 15 because of Rodgers retiring. Landry Morris to the Chargers at 16 because they just traded Thule off. Number 17 is Castana, Castaneda to the Lions. At 18, you have the Steelers going tackle with Travis Cooper. Number 19 is that top five projected uh, talent in Pat Slayton to the uh, Bengals. Uh, the right tackle Bills get as Dexter Wiener. Wiener at 20 overall. Uh, and then the Buccaneers, McCullough at 21. If I didn't want that 6-4 corner, that would have been a really unfortunate time to get him uh, coming off the board. I can't lie. But since we are going to be going for that 6-4 corner, more than likely, that's kind of irrelevant. Uh, we did pay attention to pretty much everyone that looked halfway decent. Really annoying, though, because you have a really good wide receiver like Virgil, who's six foot five. We had another guy who was six three that looked really fast. Um, but I just personally don't see us being able to make that play. Once again, we don't have many draft picks. We have more draft picks than, you know, like, you know, most teams probably. But we don't have that many draft picks in the sense that, ooh, look at these safeties. You know, we can't take just what we want just because we want them. You know, we need to make these picks count. Got to say those safeties look really nice. Two to three, is that safety good? Let's see, Bartell, six foot one, a man coverage. Ooh, this is a tough draft. So I think it's almost certain that we're trading back. I think there's a lot of value in the other rounds. The first pick I make in that second round probably is going to be the tight end McGill if he's there. But I think no matter what, we've got to get some value. We've got to move back because we're going to need to move up after that. Uh, ooh, the Seahawks give me a goaded trade. I was expecting to have to drop back further to get something like that, but hey, I am down with that. Of course, the Eagles also give me a really good trade of 64. I suppose, you know, it makes sense that we're getting this kind of value because this is actually a pretty premium spot. 22 is really good. Uh, 32 and 64. 32, 64, 138 versus 69. Wait, why wouldn't I take... The Philadelphia Eagles trade, huh? 64 and 138 versus 69 and next year picks. Uh, yeah, Philadelphia wins this trade by a mile. I'm just making sure this is correct, right? 10 spots. We gain a second round pick, a fifth and a seventh. It makes sense. It's 10 spots. It's a lot of selections. We keep ourselves in the first round, which we might even uh, actually just select somebody there. Maybe the tight end, maybe the uh, corner, not 100% sure. But let's move on. I don't really need to see anything else. Uh, it doesn't really seem like any of the players that we wanted are gone anyways. We could move back even further. We're going to see if there's any offers. If Seattle's willing to move back to that spot again, giving us like a third or something, that would be great. So I'm going to see if we can do something like that. I doubt it. I don't want to lose the tight end, but at the same time, I think we need to make a lot of trade downs. because I have a lot of second and third round guys I want. So we do have the trade uh, two-fifths, a sixth, and a seventh. The seventh being next year to uh, make this trade, but with the Bears, we're moving down eight spots to grab a really high third-round pick, and I really like that pick. The Bears get into the first round again, and we don't get to see who they take, unfortunately. Is it going to show it further? It is the DT, Daryl Connor, who has a couple of decent ratings in there. Um, I'm going to slow sim just in case, because I don't want to lose both. I would hate to lose either of the players we're looking at, the tight end or the corner, but I also don't want to lose both. As long as I get one, I'm pretty happy. Please tell me they're both there, because I'm probably going to trade up for a back-to-backer. Nice. And even though I really, really want that tight end, I think the bigger need is probably cornerback. Keenan Hill, great speed, great excel, great agility, elite change of direction, elite jumping, decent strength, 4-4-40 with an A-man, B zone coverage. It would suck if he's normal, but I think this guy is definitely a stud, so that's who I'm going to be taking. He is three in true talent. I saw that. Roger Goodell can't take it away from me. I saw that he was the third-ranked true talent player. The the crowd, I mean, the, the, the squad, the front office is going crazy. There you go, picking up that hat. The six-foot-four corner is coming to Foxborough. We got a guy that has good football IQ. He's constantly, yeah, constantly in receiver's hip pocket. 
instinctive zone defender, and it's an A-minus grade. He's a hidden dev, 94 speed, 93 excel, 90 agility, 96 change of direction, 93 jumping. What a selection. And I would lose every other player in this draft class if I had to, as long as I land this tight end. And, of course, uh, I'm after the corner, obviously. The corner was the first thing. Fourth round pick, I don't even care if it's overtrade, which it's apparently not. Uh, don't have a fifth anymore. Don't have many sixths. Hmm. What do I do here? I don't want to give him a third round. Let's see if we can do six this with the fifth next. I think that could do it. I think that might finish it. Get ourselves that tight end. There you go. I mean, the Titans don't have a, a third round pick, so they want to continue their draft. That's what they're going to have to do. We end up trading up. I really want Morin uh, Roberts, but we also do have Morency, who technically looks better anyway, so I'm not really too pushed. Obviously, we want Brown for that linebacker spot. We also have both of the safeties. Man, that's tough. But obviously, the tight end is number one. Tight end is first and foremost. Trey McGill, athletic tight end one. Welcome to the squad. Even if he's normal, that's fine. True talent, 23, B rank, and he is hidden. Uh, yeah, I mean, about the speed I expect. I was hoping for maybe a little faster, but 85 speed, 91 excel. Not really that great a jump in, but pretty damn good player. It also doesn't help that you have both of these wide receivers here who are very intriguing, to say the least. Safety is definitely up there for a need. Bartell, I think I can live with that DT uh, Morency in the third round, to be honest. I mean, Roberts, yes, he has that that round one talent grade, the true talent grade, but there's something just about him that just doesn't really feel right. It feels slightly off. So I think I'm going to be moving down until we're down to one safety, and I think I'm going to make him play for safety because that's a, it's a big problem going forward. Favors are Bartell. And weirdly enough, with a bunch of safeties actually going before our pick, both of those players are still there. I'm genuinely confused how they're both still there. Larry Favors, who's got, you know, a lot of really good ratings, looks pretty athletic. 22 years old versus the other round one talent safety in uh, Jaron Bartell. I really don't know who is better here, so I'm going to have to take a little bit of a closer look. I think it might be Bartell. Nah, it's actually Larry uh, Favors. He's got a little bit better of athleticism, and he's got a lot better bench press. So with the A-hit power, Larry Favors the choice. He was a true talent of 12. Unfortunately, normal dead, but 92 speed, 91 excel, 87 change of direction, 90 agility, pretty good jumping. He's a good player without a doubt and probably will start. All right, we're now down to the third round where we really need a uh, defensive tackle type. Uh, Morency would be great and Brown. If we finish the draft with those two players, that is a dub in my opinion. Obviously, we could use another lineman, but those are the two players I really want. We don't have that much draft capital to move up with other than trading actual third-round picks against each other. So I hope Morency is there to 72. I worry, but I'm going to just take the bet. I'm just praying, please, one more pick. Bartel goes, okay, good pick by the Broncos. Good job, fellas. Uh, let us grab Morency now. He's the only guy that we're kind of like the most worried about, Cam Morency, but he looks great. So Cam Morency, even if he's normal dev, I think we can develop him. He is a true talent of 70, and unfortunately is that normal dev we talked about. But we can develop him. That's fine. Uses active hands to easily shed blocks. Shows good anchor and strong push on film. Speed moves will stress offensive linemen. Looks like a good player to me. And I don't want to risk Brown. So a fourth, uh, third and a fourth this year, our latest uh, third round pick. We're not really going to have much depth after 22, so we'll see what we want to do with that. But I per... Oh, man, Virgil's still there, dude. Keyshawn Virgil, dude. He looks good. I think he looks good, but wide receiver, this team is good. I mean, if we go wide receiver, we could just go with someone later. I think we got to go Brown. I think Brown just looks amazing. Trent Brown, look how fast he is. We got to take him. Trent Brown is the guy. True talent. Oh, 79 true talent. Normal dev and a lot slower than I thought he would be. Don't get me wrong. He's still fast, very athletic, but that feels like a scam. I feel like he was a lot faster than that, but I guess not. And we're going to move on to our next pick. Where is it? 86. Okay, fair enough. I just want to make sure we had one in here because I think we're going to have to go uh, O-line. Wait. Virgil's still there unless I missed him? There's no way he's still there. I mean, I've got no chance. I've got no choice. Even if he sucks, I've got to take him. Keyshawn Virgil. 107 true talent. Oh, maybe he does suck. Normal dev. 92 speed. 92 speed at 6.5 is automatically you're not bad, though. I'm going to be real with you. That just automatically means you're halfway decent. 
All right, let's take a look. Can we make one trade up? I mean, we're already kind of reaching a little bit into our uh, our pocket that really doesn't exist. I also wanted to get a wide receiver. There's a couple of UDFAs. And maybe we can get to the sixth round. But I like O-line. I mean, I don't like O-line. I need O-line. Kramer looks decent. He's also, like, big and tall. So he makes the most sense to play tackle, but he's not even that athletic. So, hmm. Connor Williams really can't be my only guy. You know what? I'm just going to try and move down until we're down to literally just one lineman. Do the classic. And if they look halfway decent, we'll make a trade up if possible because obviously we're we're moving into a spot we have no skin in. We're all the way in the seventh round at the moment. But so far, some wins and obviously some losses. Kind of screwed ourselves on next year picks, but Marcus Jones and a six next year to the Commanders for a mid-third or fourth. I think that's pretty fair. Marcus Jones probably worth high fifth if I were to, to guess. Uh, there's a bunch of different players here, but I think we were making that trade up just to get another lineman. Not even another, but just one in this draft. Quinn Kramer, I mean, there's definitely some things to hate. Also, some okay things to love. I worry about his hiddenness. 84 rank, and he is hidden. Okay, I thought he... I really didn't know. I really didn't know if he was going to be hidden or not. Let's move on to the next round. We got a couple of UDFAs, so let's get to the sixth. I highly doubt we can make any trade-ups. We really shouldn't even try. If we can get a sixth-round pick for that seven, that's like the smartest thing we could do. But let's just, you know, cross our T's. Yeah, I mean, you can see a lot of really good talent here. Edge wouldn't be the worst thing in the world either. How fast were these wide receivers? Oh, damn, they were fast, though. I'm going to go to the next round. I think that, you know what, I'm actually going to slow down. I'm going to slow the sim. And if we can, uh, if we have to make a trade-up, we will. But, you know, I don't want to just grab a fast wide receiver just to grab a fast wide receiver. We could use Edge pretty badly, too. And not our first choice. I'm, I'm going to look at Hampton real quick, too, because he was fast as hell, wasn't he? 4-5. Yeah, I mean, he looks great. But uh, not our first choice of wide receiver, but pretty damn good. Uh, Demario Milner, 5'10", 21 years old, super elite athlete. It's going to be the guy we take. True talent grade of 171, and he's hidden dev. We've got ourselves a kicker turner, I'll tell you that much. We have got ourselves a speedster. We'll have to pay attention to see if there's any uh, decent, like, free agent uh, UDFAs and whatnot. But uh, as far as... Uh, oh, Jordan Davis is a Packer now. Uh, as far as our draft goes, though, I think we did well. We don't know these overalls. About to find out. Pretty damn good. The wide receiver is the lowest overall, but he was hidden. The corner was 79. The tight end was 75. The strong safety who was normal was 76. The DT was 72. The linebacker was 72. Virgil was 71. And Kramer was 72. Uh, I think we should go in a line. Of course, we will not be looking at the devs. This is not like a rebuild where, you know, we're going to see the devs shortly after anyway. So I just kind of, you know, jumped the gun a little bit. But yeah, Keenan Hill looks great. Uh, injury and stamina are great. Toughness a little low, but speedy as hell. Main coverage is on point. Tackle's a little low. Catch is a little low, but he looks like a great CB2. I will have to change his number, I think. I mean, we'll have to change all of that stuff. Trey McGill, the 75 overall tight end. Six foot four, 22 years old, 68 short route, 69 medium, uh, run blocks okay, catching's decent. Only has run after catch, which feels a little wrong, but hey, that's, you know, that's the way it is, I suppose. Favors, the strong safety, 76 overall strong safety, Larry Favors, another guy that needs to change name, um, numbers, but uh, pretty cool jersey, uh, or like, not jersey, but gear setup, I suppose. Injury and toughness are a little low. Not the best block shot. I mean, he's really weird. I feel like he was going to be a thumper. He was going to be a guy that just bullied people, but he's got good hit power, and that's kind of where it stands. Morency, who is also, unfortunately, normal dev, was a 72 overall with 76 finesse, 71 block shot, 89 strength. Very athletic, though, obviously. Injury's great. Toughness is okay. Then we move on to the wide receiver. No, we do not. We move on to linebacker Trent Brown. Let's take a look at his uh, speed rating. So, did we see change direction? Does it show it? Very raw, though, right? The zone coverage is decent. Block shed's not. Uh, not even that good of a hit power guy. A little disappointed with him. You know, I kind of went for him, you know, higher than I normally would. Usually, I'd kind of wait and react with the linebackers. But I, I really thought he was going to be like a knockout of the park hit. I will say 81 change direction is really good for a linebacker. So, he is actually pretty damn busted when you factor that in, which is really important. Keyshawn Virgil, uh, yeah, I mean, I don't really see how this is a 71 overall. He's all the catching traits. He's got juke ability ratings even, uh, and he's got really good catching and okay release, and not even okay, it's great release, and okay route running. I mean, this is not a bad player at all. 81 looks fitting on him, I can't lie. 
Then we move on to the center, Kramer. Who is he going to play left tackle for us? I don't know. We'll find out. But at least he's hitting. That's a win. And then the wide receiver at the end that we drafted, Milner, who is potentially going to be super czar. We've seen these types of builds before. Pretty damn raw. Really not that good at catching. He is definitely going to start out his career here as a kick returner, which there's nothing wrong with. We got speed now. Of course, some of these numbers are going to change. A lot of the names are going to change. we got to got to make it all happen. Uh, but I do want to take a look at some of the other players that we passed on. There was definitely some names. Like, let's take a look at Henry Ross, the first pick overall. And the Rams seem like they have found themselves a near Donald replacement. If anyone was going to do it, this guy looks pretty damn good to do it. And he is an X Factor. He's kind of insane with it. They got themselves a certified winner. What else did we have? We had a bunch of other players up there, but where's anyone? What about McCullough? Where is he? McCullough was on our list. We don't know what our guy's dev is, in fairness, and this guy is hidden. He looks really solid, uh, but not that fast. So, obviously, unless this guy's, like, multiple devs higher than our guy, I don't think he's as good as our guy, just the height and the speed. So, automatically, our guy's better because this guy's only star. That's a win. Our uh, cornerback is 100% better. We knew he would be, too. Just the size and the speed alone is enough to develop. Uh, oh, wow. There was an 83 overall running back. And they were in the second round. Can't tell if that's generational. I don't think it is, but it could be. There was probably some running backs that we should have looked at later. And he is an X-Factor. I mean, with the overall and the X-Factor, you got to probably say that is a generational player. But yeah, there was some decent running backs that uh, had some speed, but we just didn't have the ability to go for him. We just had other needs and didn't even really fill all of those even. Uh, Joey Roberts was, in fact, a high overall, 77 overall, hidden dev. He is raw, though, like we expected. He's got really good traits, though. Let's take a look at this dev. Did we really sell? Because, like, you know, he's he that, that round one talent grade. Star dev. I mean, I can't really tell. He's better than our guy, I would say, but our guy is better at getting to the QB. So, in the end, our guy could actually develop faster as well because of that. Uh, and then we had the choice. Broyles look really good, too. Let's take a look at Broyles. Quinton Broyles. We will see a lot of him, too, because he has joined... The division rivals. He looks great. He looks really great, but didn't really need wide receiver that bad. Even taking Virgil was higher than we needed to take a wide receiver, but star dev, yeah, I don't really hate where we uh, used our resources then. And, of course, there's probably some linebackers, but I'm not going to remember their names, unfortunately, so we can't really compare them against Trent Brown. Uh, on the third round, there were some pretty good players here. Bartel, we actually had a choice of. Also normal, in fairness. Uh, way worse hit power, worse block shed, so I kind of like our guy a lot more than him, so I think we made the right call there. We actually went with a slightly older player for once, and it, in a way, sort of helped out, I suppose. Any other players? I can't really quite remember everyone. I don't, we had two Samuels here, both going, like, back-to-back. -back. I don't know if there was anyone else here that I wanted. I think... There might have been someone, but I just can't remember them. That's that's basically the draft, though, which, once again, I think we did a pretty damn bang-up bang job of. And, of course, we don't know the devs of some of our players. We could have got some superstars in there. Of course, we will be doing training camp uh, NFL debut. Johnny Wright is ready to take the field for the first time today. We also have that for Justice Kelly for the New York Jets. Clayton Wallace, welcome to the league, is ready to take over this league by storm. So a lot of guys starting, it would seem... But, uh, yeah, we have a press conference we're going to take a look at. This is probably going to talk about the fact that we said what we said about the draft and then didn't deliver. I really don't care, to be honest. Or maybe not. Maybe it's something else. Nope. That's going to be what it's about. Let's talk about the last few months. You said in February that you'd win the draft. by finding We definitely won the draft, by the way. There's no doubt about it. We landed like 670-plus overalls. A lot of them were normal, but still. Oh, here we go. Who do you find? A, I think you found a sleeper at. Um... I'm going to say Morin sees a sleeper. That's how I'm going to call the sleeper. Even though I think the tight end is going to be goaded for us, if anything. Is that what we're going to do? Could be the... The safety is probably the true sleeper because he's not going to start, I don't think. Or maybe he will, but we don't. Ex we didn't expect him to be a guy we even drafted. But yeah, the DT, I think, is going to be the guy Morin see. Wait. DT2? We didn't even make that choice yet. That he's a sleeper. Okay, cool. I don't give a damn. Yeah, that probably won't matter. Oh, I didn't. I was doing all this yap.
but didn't realize that uh, they were just mad because we didn't do the, the actual sleeper thing. Oh, who gives a piss off, honestly? Who gives a damn? They didn't even fill our roster, by the way. Like, they didn't genuinely give us, like, the over amount of players that you would normally need to uh, start, like, the preseason process. Of course, this is probably already a pretty long video, so we'll end up, um, you know, kind of shaping the roster a little bit with free agents and then doing training camp. And then the next episode, I imagine, would be the preseason games themselves. Yeah, we're going to be adding a couple of different young players at skill positions. I think one of them is going to be Cliff Harrington. Welcome to the squad. And I really want to add this speedy wide receiver. This is actually one of the guys that I have on my list, Will Mayo, but I just don't need him. And I don't think it would hurt having a veteran presence on the team. We'll see who actually makes the 53, but a couple of veterans at some clutch positions wouldn't hurt. I think one more position we would like to do is right guard because we're going to have Cole Strange there. Uh, Glowinski is really good at his job, so Mr. Mark Glowinski. We do want a veteran DT as well, I think. Shelby Harris, he's a pretty damn good player. Just kind of on uh, perpetually bad teams, bad rosters. Uh, what else do we have? Edge, Chandler Jones. Could you bring... I don't think that, that morale would work. I really don't think it would. Maybe it's, you know, a long time coming type of thing, but I don't know. I don't believe in it. Who's this? Mario Edwards. A little on the slower side, but he does have that morale fit. Left out. I don't even know which position it is that we need a backup at. JPP still there. Bud Dupree's a fast player, so we'll go with Bud Dupree. I think we're going to add the rest as uh, DBs. And I actually have decided to end the episode there, as if you guys have some suggestions for names or numbers you want to see for some of these rookies, and I end up using them, it's going to be a little awkward if we do a whole training camp or preseason with different names, and then we change them. So... If you guys have suggestions for names and numbers, no guarantees that we will end up using them, but if I think they're cool or I think they fit, whatever it might be, we may end up using them. And of course, uh, that's pretty much going to be it. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, maybe leave a like, subscribe if you're new. If you're not new, I do appreciate your support on the channel. Follow me on Twitter, Trump Air, second channel, PK Air Plays for now, Madden content. And uh, if you do end up becoming a channel member, look forward in the future to the end of the video having a sort of credits shout out uh, for your username. And then, of course, 500 likes, and we will have said training camp and preseason video tomorrow. Regardless, thanks for watching. I hope you guys come back for next video. But until next video, uh, 